YouTube, Matt M. Roy back again, back to another vlog video for today. It is absolutely beautiful out, as you can see, though I will say it is getting pretty warm. It is probably about 75 degrees right now, it's supposed to top out around 80, so it's going to be kind of in an interesting day to see uh, <laughs> how long I can manage outside, but uh, not a cloud in the sky, and I want to show you guys some things we've been doing. Mom just put this out last night. God bless America. I think uh, I think that pretty much says all says it all for this time of year. You know, Memorial Day is coming up. Uh, my dad's birthday is coming up, and I finally did get him a birthday present. Again, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is because he does tend to watch these videos. But uh, one thing I want to talk to you guys about: supposedly over the last week or so. Um, I've been getting a lot of haters, and I think I finally figured out why. There is a site called 4chan. It's some type of Chinese, um, basically like a vlogging slight site, and somebody's been putting my videos up there. And it has not been me. I've had a couple of comments, people saying that, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't get, you shouldn't be putting your videos on this site if you don't want haters. Well, I'm not putting my videos on this site. I don't know who's doing it, so... I'm going to try and uh, figure that out. I've looked around to see. I know I had one or two of my older videos that were stolen and actually re-uploaded uh, under a different name. One specifically was the um, video I did of the review of the uh, Sony DCR TRV 280, that camcorder. So, got to see if I can find out who's stealing my uh, content, basically. Now, I don't know. Somebody may just be uploading on there because they like my video, but if that's all it is, Please just discontinue putting my videos up there because obviously it's not helping me other than just to get dislikes. Now it is helping put my videos out there, but I really don't want to get uh, views that way. And now that I know what it is and where the problem's coming from, please cease and desist. And the site is called 4chan. I'm sure a lot of you guys may know more about it than I do, but that's in other words, that's pretty much been the problem. So. Now that I got that figured out, hopefully the uh, tons of dislikes will stop. And like I said, they're actually helping me out in a way, so I'm not that worried about it. But still, I don't need to uh, get all these haters attached to my channel. So, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I'm just looking over here. We're going to have to get this house clean sooner than later because, as you can see, we're getting some mold built up here on the side. That's very typical of uh, houses here in Virginia. What tends to happen is because we have such high humidity levels here, especially in the summertime, the mold grows here, and because the sun doesn't get to hit here a lot, the high humidity, the low sun, is just a breeding ground for all this mold, and some of the other houses in our area look even worse than this. But yeah, it's about time we're going to have to go ahead and get the uh, house cleaned one more time. I'm just noticing another problem up there. I don't know if the camcorder will pick it up or not, but there's a... Uh, piece of flashing there and looks like the actual siding is coming off or it's getting pushed in so you're gonna have to have one of the uh, guys take a look at that hopefully it's nothing too serious I I really don't think it is okay check this out guys you guys can see that bird up there this bird sits here every morning and constantly talks. Not exactly sure what it is. It might be a mockingbird. Uh, didn't like me filming him. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm heading out to doing my usual rounds. Gonna head to the thrift store, probably to the dollar store. And I do have to go to um, Harris Teeter and pick up a medication. So, uh, gonna be out for a little while. I'm just looking at the therm thermometer here and it says it's 77 degrees right now. And I can believe it because just being out those five or 10 minutes, I'm already starting to sweat a little bit here. So yeah, we could tell summer's pretty much fully here. It's gonna come in with a blaze. Now the odd part is the next few days it's gonna be really hot. Like it's supposed to get up to 83 today, 85 tomorrow, and then I think, um, by the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and then into Memorial Day, there is a storm front coming. And they say it may even be a, a tropical storm. 
and not only we're we gonna have some pretty nasty stormy weather for the holiday it's actually gonna get pretty cold I think the highest they said it's gonna be after the after this little warm spell is gonna be in like the mid 70s and of course here comes the rain again <laughs> Oh man, I know it's, I hate talking about it, but it seems like it's all we have around here lately is rain. I mean, these beautiful days are becoming fewer and farther between, but that's what happens when you live this close to the, uh, to the coast. I mean, anything can happen, but you know what? I'm going to be positive. I'm going to try to enjoy this day. Hopefully, uh, I can get out and maybe do a little bit of a walk later on if it doesn't get too hot. I'm hoping that by 5 or 6 o'clock the temperatures will go ahead and uh, go back down maybe into the low 70s. And uh, it's not supposed to be as humid today, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I got this cop behind me. He seems to be following really close. I don't know if he's following me or just... Nah, he's just uh, on his way somewhere. I tell you, I really like these new uh, police cars. A lot of the ones, at least in our area, are the new uh, Ford Tauruses with the, uh, the show engines, the V6s. And man, they are so nice looking. And uh, instead of using like the uh, red decals like they did in the past, now they're using kind of like a, a rust color uh, decal that says either sheriff or patrol car, just depending on who it is. But, you know, we still do have a lot of the uh, older Crown Vicks around, and I, I was actually really surprised because, you know, they, they haven't made those now for about five years. I think 2011 was the last time that was when the last Crown Vic uh, went off the line. And uh, as you guys may or may not know, cop cars get a lot, a lot of use, and usually they only last maybe four or five years before they send them to the uh, police auctions and auction them off. So, I don't think I'll be seeing too many more of those, <laughs> at least not for much longer. It's really a shame, too, because they were really good cars. It's the same, uh, uh, like, I think they called the Panther body, just like my uh, town car. And, man, they are really, really very solidly built. Um, good good engines, good drivetrain. I mean, they pretty much all had the 4.6 V8, which is a diehard engine. I mean, these engines are known to go four or 500,000 miles before even needing a rebuild. And these things are built like trucks. Uh, it's it's really it's really sad. Just be just in the name of you know saving uh, saving the environment, which it really isn't going to do. That they want to go ahead and stop making these big uh, V8 American muscle cars, pretty much, because they just don't want to. They just say that the environment is 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 damaged because these cars put out way too much. Uh, Pollution. Well, I got news for you. I mean, there are things that put out way more pollution. I mean, look at any big rig. I mean, spewing out diesel. I mean, they put out tons of pollution. These weren't that big of a deal, but I mean, you know what, guys? I'm going to digress because I don't need to get into a whole uh, whole argument about why I think uh, American cars should stay the way they are and not go to these tiny little subcompacts. Well, I'm almost at the thrift store, so I will talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, so just left the uh, thrift store. Nothing too great, but I did kind of find something eh, sort of unique. This is called the Video Chat Camera. It's a little webcam that you can have it stand like this, or you can actually clamp it onto a surface. And I thought it was really, really cool. I've never actually seen anything like it before. It was in there last week, and they were asking a dollar... 98 for it and I'm cheap so I want to wait till it went on sale and sure enough they just marked it down to 98 cents but <laughs> I don't know what it'll be like it's just a cheap little gimmicky thing you can see right there the uh, cameras right here it swivels around if you need it to and they can just kind of clamp it on to a surface if you want like I could actually put that onto my steering wheel of course I don't have my laptop or anything with me so it'd be kind of pointless but I just kind of found it unique. It's got a few LEDs in the front there, so it probably does really well with low light. I might hook it up to one of my computers just to see what it's like. See, I think the idea is you're supposed to, you can either sit it like this and have it sit like on a table, or you can just clamp it onto something. So it's definitely uh, multi-purpose. I said figured for a dollar was worth kind of checking out. It was so funny. I ran into uh, a friend of mine that works there. She hasn't been there in the last couple of days, but... We got to talking on the way out, and I was saying that, yeah, you know, this, this month's really hard because this is when all my bills are due, and she's like, yeah, the same thing. I'm like, yeah, the really the thing that really got me this month was the personal property tax, and she went, did one of these faces. 
She's like, oh my gosh, I didn't take any account. I got to pay personal property. I'm like, don't worry. It isn't due till, you know, like June 6th. But it's just one of those things when you live in the state of Virginia. Um, and I think a lot of the other commonwealths like Pennsylvania and Massachusetts are the same way. You have what's called personal property tax. Basically, that's any of your big ticket items. Like if you have a car, a boat, an RV, any of these what they consider non-essential big ticket items, you actually have to pay a percentage of its value each year in a tax. It's like a luxury tax. Um, well, luckily my car isn't that much because my car is a 99. The older your vehicle, the, the less the actual appraised uh, value and then of course the less you have to pay and that's one big bonus for driving an older vehicle. Even though my car is in excellent condition, it being a 99, I don't have to pay the ridiculous amounts. Like um, a friend of mine just bought a uh, Kia Soul, a uh, brand new one, and I think their personal property taxes four or five hundred dollars a year whereas my personal property tax for this car is maybe fifty dollars so that's one thing it definitely helps to drive an older car well it's about quarter 11 now uh, i need to go home and finish off uh, another one of those computers I actually uh, just sold one to the same person that bought a computer for me last week and she's gonna be picking it up sometime right at the end of the month so that'll be probably in about four or five days because memorial day is coming up real soon and uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this other computer that I have. Hopefully uh, get that listed on Craigslist. And uh, we'll see what the rest of the day brings. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Well, I just got home. And the bird is back, that's for sure. That thing, I kid you not, will sit there for about two hours and just keep talking. Squawking away, making all kinds of noise. It usually talks to a bird in one of the other, uh, one of the trees there. Pretty song though. So you can see we must have had a jet or two come by because I see the uh, actually there's one right there. You can see it's still moving. A little jet trail. I want to show you guys something really cool that they did uh, when they installed the air conditioner here to kind of frame the new controller, the thermostat and the controller here. He actually took what this is is a three light switch plate similar to what this is. And he actually framed it on here and it actually makes it not only does it make it look good but it actually gives you a better way to mount it because a lot of times the uh, the wall studs aren't that strong so what he does is he mounts this to the wall stud and then he mounts this to the plate and makes for a really really nice and uh, strong connection there this is the new uh, AC and heat controller that we got we didn't opt for the touchscreen one because we really didn't need it which was like a programmable unit very easy to use this one basically you put it on auto and then if you want uh, air conditioning you go to cool heat you go to heat and that's pretty much all you need pretty much you always keep this on auto there's really no need to put it in the on position because if you put it in the on position it'll kind of just stay on all the time um, up and down this tells you what the current temperature is and this is what you have it set for so very, very basic and very easy to use, and that's what we like in this house, things that are pretty easy. All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm back in my room. I want to give you an update on this uh, Lenovo Think Center system that I've been working on. This is one of two that I got from that weekend haul. Once again, this has a Pentium dual-core CPU, and I have a little bit more information on it that I'm going to share with you real quick. Just finished installing Windows on here, and before anybody asks, yes, it is Windows 10. So, no comments on that, please. <laughs> I know, I don't want to be a jerk about that, but man, everybody out there that seems to hate Windows 10. Go ahead and give you guys the specs on this, because I wasn't exactly sure until I started working on it. It is a Pentium Dual Core E5400 running at 2.7 gigahertz has four gigabytes of RAM and running the 64-bit version of Windows 10 and it has a 500 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive in it this is a Western Digital uh, blue drive uh, graphics on this are I believe they're Intel graphics let me see what uh, what chipset it is it is the G41 Express chipset so decent it's got 64 megabytes dedicated and it shares uh, basically 1.6 gigabytes of the system memory so total graphics memory in this is 
1695 megabytes not a super super great card but good enough should be able to play um, some high definition uh, video uh, I'm gonna open up crystal disk info and I actually found this pretty interesting this was the newest of the drives that I picked up this past weekend see it's a Western Digital model WD 500 AAKX one thing I found really interesting, this is supposed to be a used hard drive. Look at the hours on this drive. 54 hours and only power on count is only 16. So this was actually a brand new hard drive for the most part when I picked it up. I, I mean, I knew it was a newer drive, but I was surprised to see it really hardly had any hours on it. And as you can see, it, it definitely says it's a good drive. Uh, pretty much everything is uh, above the thresholds here no real allocated sectors um, looks like there's no seek errors so everything's at a hundred or two hundred um, it looks like it may have gotten a little bit hotter than it should have at one time but I've pretty much remedied that there's a lot of uh, extra space here so this drive is not gonna run hot anymore so yeah I mean this system is really good to go I gotta finish uh, getting all the updates installed and then I'll go ahead and list it. These are really nice, uh, durable systems. Um, I'm, it was, they were used, obviously, in some type of business environment. I'm actually surprised they took them out so soon because these can easily run Windows 10. And another cool thing is I didn't even have to install a burner. This actually had this uh, dual-layer DVD burner in it already, which is actually another kind of rare thing to find in a business class system because usually they don't bother spending the extra money to put burners in. Usually they'll put in, like, maybe a DVD-ROM uh, and maybe a CD burner, like a combo drive at the most, but sometimes you only find DVD-ROM drives. So yeah, interesting little system. The only thing I really want to do is, the only monitor I have to pair with it right now is this really crappy 17-inch uh, Acer monitor, which has a few uh, stuck pixels. I don't, I don't think the ca oh, there you go. You can see one of them right there, another one right there. So this is basically a test bench monitor I was using, but I think what I'm going to do is just list this computer, just the computer, keyboard, mouse itself, going to try to sell without the monitor, and uh, see if I get any takers. Talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, guys. Well, the VCR is installed in near my bedside TV, and I must say it works flawlessly. It's got a nice big clock on there like my other one did. Uh, just to recap, right up there is my Toshiba DVD player slash recorder got my PlayStation 3 and then of course the uh, mid-range speaker on this uh, Dell surround sound system that I actually use as a uh, four-way stereo here uh, my actual laser display, the DVL-909 and my Fios box. Now I will show you a picture. This is actually a paused image of the movie Camelot um, that I'm playing with the uh, VCR. I'm not actually going to play the movie for obvious copyright reasons but I must say it is uh, beautiful picture no scan lines no distortion yeah, as you can see it even pauses perfectly that's one nice thing about having a forehead VCR versus the older two and three head VCRs which couldn't scan them as the tape as much and you would be able to tell as soon as you pause it those VCRs you would actually see the picture kinda wave when it was paused but not with a really nice high-end VCR like this one way you can tell this is an older VCR, I'm not sure if a lot of you guys know this or not, uh, you see how the, the uh, tape tray is actually positioned more to the left? Well, in the mid to late 90s, all the VCRs went to a center mount tape mechanism, so that kind of dates this for me as being from the early to close to mid 90s. I'm putting this right around 1992 maybe 1993 you guys if you guys know the exact date I really haven't had a chance to look it up you can uh, post it in the comments here but man for four dollars and fifty cents I am one happy customer all right guys well this is the end of the vlog for today hope you guys really enjoyed this please remember to like and subscribe and as always have a blessed day everybody